Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, our today's topic is incubation, incubation methods and requirements. So this topic belongs to poultry science or poultry production uh, portion of this animal husbandry course. So let's start with uh, the contents of this lecture. In this lecture, I will be discussing with you what is incubation, what are different uh, incubation methods and the types of incubators and then incubation requirements will be discussed with you at the end of this lecture. So let's start with incubation. What is incubation? The process during which in a period of almost three weeks, microscopic germ is developed into a chick which is capable of walking and eating. The period during which this process is completed is called incubation period. Different species of birds have different incubation periods. For example, chicken egg hatch in 21 days. Whereas the eggs of quails they hatch in 17 days and the eggs of ducks they hatch in 28 to 30 days and the eggs of pheasants they hatch in 28 days of incubation period. So during this period suitable conditions are provided to the hatching eggs for best hatching results. So uh, if we talk about the type of incubation there are two types of incubation the natural incubation and artificial incubation. In natural incubation this is commonly used for backyard poultry keeping in villages in most of the tropical countries of the world. In this method eggs are incubated with the help of broody hens. It is a primitive method but it is most effective methods to get a high percentage of sex. Natural hatching or hatching of eggs by hen it is still popular with small poultry keepers in remote rural areas in many parts of our country. The most important thing in this method is the selection of a broody hen. It should be of medium body size to accommodate fair number of eggs and should be a good sitter, quiet and free from ectoparasites. A nest bedded with clean, dry and comfortable litter is prepared for this purpose. Usually the nest is a saucer like shape where the hatching eggs are placed with brooder and slightly upside. The nest is usually placed in a dark area of the house with minimum disturbance. During incubation head, hen should not be disturbed. The hens should be taken out at least twice a day for about 30 minutes for feeding and watering. The hen should be well taken care of and protected from predators. Depending on the size of hen, almost 10 to 15 eggs can be placed under one bird. The best time of set hen is at a night as at this time she is more likely to settle down to her job. Besides when eggs are put under the hens at night the chicken are most likely to appear on the night of 21st day and will have the whole night to rest and gain strength. Let's talk about the second type which is artificial incubation. In this method of incubation the requirements of incubation are fulfilled by a machine called incubator. This method uses high modern and sophisticated technology with automation for maximum hatchability. This method of incubation has many advantages over natural incubation which are number one large number of eggs even up to lakhs at a time can be incubated to meet high commercial demand of chicks. Secondly incubation can be practiced throughout the year as there is no need for a broody hen for this purpose. Thirdly the risk of disease transfer from hen to chicks is eliminated because of no contact of the hen with eggs after laying. Fourthly the essential incubation requirements are provided with their optimum levels to get maximum hatchability with quality hygienic care and minimum chances of infections. And lastly automation of incubators it saves time and labor. 
Now let's discuss different types of incubators. Principally, there are two types of incubators, uh, which are uh, small or steel air incubators and mammoth or force draft uh, incubators or cabinet type incubators. The force draft or mammoth incubators, they can have setters and hatchers separately. Whereas the small incubators are usually a small combined like. So in case of chicken eggs, setters are used to incubate eggs for first 18 days, while chicks actively hatch out for final 3 days in hatchers. So let's discuss these different types of incubators. Small or steel air incubators. It is usually of small capacity from 50 to 500 eggs with only single layer incubation where the eggs lying flat in the machine. These incubators are heated by kerosene oil or electricity. Ventilation is effect affected by changes of internal temperature. These are also called still air incubators because the air inside the incubator circulates under natural way of circulation without any mechanical devices for air circulation. In these incubators, the eggs are placed in the egg tray in natural position. And what is the natural position? The broader end of the egg is upside and narrow, narrow end F of the egg is downside. The turning of the eggs is manual and individual, twice or thrice daily. But there are some uh, latest or updated versions of small or steel air incubators which have uh, automated control over turning, have control over temperature and humidity. Uh, they have sensors for temperature and humidity too. Now let's talk about cabinet type, mammoth type or forced draft incubators. The incubators are very capacious and generally cabinet like in shape. So it enables the breeder to incubate several thousand eggs with greater economy to develop his business by selling baby chicks. These incubators are usually run by electricity. Eggs are placed in egg trays with broader end up from the top to be bottom in the machine. The eggs are turned either manually but collectively with the help of a handle or automatically with a time controlled motor where the position of all the eggs can be changed collectively. The temperature is evenly distributed in the entire machine by either pads or fans which also control the ventilation process. Hence the name is given forced draft machine. Moisture is usually provided from flat trays which have large evaporating surfaces or by some form of uh, water spray injections arranged in conjunction with the ventilation system or by injection, injection of stream. The incubators may be of a shape in which setting and hatching is done in the same compartment or it may have separate setting or hatching compartments. So. <clears throat> These incubators have been further improved by various companies. Uh, nowadays, the uh, cabinet type or mammoth or forced draft type of incubators, they are fully automated. They have uh, uh, automatic uh, temperature control system, humidity control system and turning uh, of uh, uh, eggs can be done according uh, uh, to the requirement of the hatching eggs. So there are different uh, uh, in improvements in these uh, mammoth or cabinet type uh, uh, incubators. The first one is walk-in incubators. Walk-in incubator is uh, a, in fact a, a room into which it is possible to walk or to wheel the trolleys and in which staff can work. So it may be cabinet type construction and capable of being erected and operated in an existing building or it may be of a build in type in which the shell of the incubator room forms an integral part of the hatchery structure and walls of the room have to bear loads over and above their functional requirements of rigidity and insulation. In both types, the arrangements of setting, turning and hatching equipment are similar to those of the large cabinet incubators. But the heating and ventilation are much more fully automatic than cabinet type incubator. 
So these type of incubators, they provide great economy of floor space and consequently uh, reduce in uh, uh, capital cost and in time and labor for maintenance and oppression of uh, the hatchery. The second modification in this uh, uh, cabinet type incubator is drive-in incubator. <clears throat> uh, like uh, it involves the transfer of eggs from the trolleys to setting racks and trays. They may be set in blocks or alternately. Uh, other machines allow the eggs to be wheeled into the incubator or in uh, trolley with the same trolley remaining in the machine as the frame holding the trays of eggs during incubation. So in the latter uh, methods, eggs are obviously in blocks according to stage of the development and different manufacturers of incubators have the trolleys positioned in different ways. So as opposed to walk in, these machines uh, may be described as drive in incubators. At the end, I will be discussing with you incubation requirements. So let's start with the uh, incubation requirements. The first and foremost and very basic requirement for incubation is temperature. It is the most critical factor for the successful hatching of the chicks. Because developing chicks are very um, sentient to the temperature of the environment. So low temperature slows down the development process and therefore results in late hatching with low hatchability. So a continuous high uh, incubation temperature, it results in early uh, uh, in hatching and results due to an increase in crippled and deformed chicks and mortality of chicks. So therefore uh, suitable temperature should be maintained like for example in case of small uh, incubators in first week the temperature is maintained at 102.5 to 103 degree Fahrenheit and then in the second and third week temperature is set to 102 degree Fahrenheit. After 18th day to end of the hatch, uh, the temperature is lowered down to 100 to 101 degree Fahrenheit. And in mammoth type of incubator or cabinet incubators, uh, the setter temperature is set at 99.5 degree Fahrenheit for first 18 days. While uh, the in case of hatcher, the temperature is reduced to about 0.5 degree Fahrenheit, that is 99 degree Fahrenheit for the last three days. The next second important requirement for uh, hum incubation is relative humidity. So hatchability of eggs is definitely affected by uh, moisture conditions inside the incubator. The relative humidity for the best hatching results, it should be between 55 to uh, 60 percent during first 18 days and should be increased about 5 to 10 percent that is it should be uh, 60 to 70 percent after uh, uh, 18 days of uh, hatching. So high relative humidity it results in the production of wet chicks and abnormal growth of the embryo whereas low humidity causes stickiness of the chicks with the shell membrane resulting into poor hatching results. It also increases uh, uh, the production of deformed and weak chicks. So normally 11 to 13 percent inherent water content may be lost during incubation without harmful results. Third important requirement for incubation is ventilation. Incoming of the fresh air into the incubator and outgoing of the foul air from the incubator is also a key to the success of hatching results. Because the chick embryos being living organism require oxygen for their development and give off carbon dioxide. Therefore, optimum level of oxygen that should be 21% and CO2 it should be a 0.4%. They are very much essential for good hatching results. If the amount of CO2 exceeds 1% limit, the hatching results will be adversely affected. Whereas the increase in CO2 up to 2% will cause drastic reduction in hatchability. So when CO2 concentration in the incubator reaches up to 5% level, the hatching results, they would be zero. Therefore, for successful optimum level of oxygen and CO2 are required in the incubator. Still air machine need more ventilation near the end of the hatch while there is no such problem in forced draft incubators or uh, cabinet type uh, incubators normally. Fourth and last requirement is position of the hatching eggs and turning. Eggs are normally incubated 
broader and up or by placing in the natural position. So under these conditions, the head of the